Hello, welcome back to the hangar once again. Uh, Saturday evening, wind finally died down. It was gusting 24 knots earlier today. It looks like it's just basically right down the runway a knot or two uh, at this point. So uh, I borrowed a 360 camera. So we're gonna give that a shot and maybe some cockpit audio if it works, we will see. So join me if you'd like. All right, welcome to the airplane. So I know in the intro I said the wind was right down the runway at one or two knots, but no sooner I say that, we're probably five to seven knots across the runway, so a little bit of a crosswind today. We'll come up here to the end and do a run-up. Alright, this is a simple airplane, she's a 1946 Aronka 7AC champ. Well, the checklist is pretty simple, it's a cigar checklist, C stands for controls. So, free and correct, so the stick always points to the up aileron, so that aileron's up, that aileron's down, that aileron's up, that aileron's down. Up, down, on the elevator, and the rudder's moving left and right as well. The I of cigars instruments, so in this airplane, we got oil temperature coming up. We got good oil pressure, about 40 psi at idle. And uh, we'll set the altimeter for field altitude, which is 960 feet. Next one's gas. The fuel is on, carb heat is off, primer is locked. A is airplane stuff, which on this airplane is trimmed down, seat belt latched. Confirm the back seat seat belt's latched, so there's nothing back there to get. Uh, uh, tangled up in the controls and uh, make sure the door's closed. In this case, the door is off. Uh, so, I guess that's not relevant. And then the uh, R is for run up, so we'll go into a quick run up. The 1500 RPM. Got a mag check. The 50 PSI, 50 RPM drop. About a 50 to 75 RPM drop. And the car beat. You don't get much, there's not much heat to go with yet, but it's about a 25 RPM drop. Oil pressure and oil temperature are still great. And we have a crosswind still. Alright, that means we're ready to go. I do like on this airplane quickly to do a full power run up before takeoff. Make sure I'm getting what I expect to get for full power RPM, which is somewhere over 2100, 2150 or so, and that's, that's right around where I'm at here. Alright. Holding traffic, champ, the number 1476 Echo, taking off runway 17, holding. Stick forward, tails up. She's ready to fly. And same ground effect about 50 miles an hour and climb out. And there are power transmission lines here at the end of the runway. So once I'm clear of those, of the tree obstacles, I like to do a quick turn to the right. Just to stay above, make sure I stay above the glide path of those, uh, those wires. And once I'm well and clear past those, I can turn back over. Then I'll have to go fly over the house, see what's going on down there. And it is certainly a little bit windy up here still today. That's about 500 feet above the ground, so we can level up there. We're in a sparsely populated area. 
And bring it down to about, I don't know, 2100 RPM or so. We're so we're not going anywhere. And I'm lucky enough to live about a mile away from the airport, so I like to come check in on what's going on down on the ground while I'm flying. Not a lot today. Well, we'll just head out west for a little while. Don't really have anything to do to see today. Just going to have a little bit of fun. So this airplane is a 1946 Aronka Champ. Uh, she's got the original, well, not the original, but she's still got a 65 horsepower Continental. Uh, which is mostly adequate. Uh, certainly hot on a summer day, heavy. You gotta be careful to watch that density altitude, particularly uh, out of short fields. And I'm based out of a 2,000 foot strip, like I said, and I get about, um, And there are obstacles on, on both ends. Up the north end, there's some trees. That's definitely the larger of the obstacles. And on the south is those wires. The wires really aren't a factor. You know, when you're off around the middle midpoint of the runway, you're already kind of above them the way the topography is. But, but a factor to consider nonetheless. Uh, she was last restored in 1992, her last recover. And, uh, you know, it shows her age, but she's still, I think she's still beautiful. A little bit of patchwork here and there to keep... So I first got my private pilot's license in Oklahoma. Chickasha, Oklahoma, uh, in 2016. Uh, shortly thereafter, got married. Uh, there's a couple of years in there that uh, didn't fly much, a couple hours each year with an instructor. Uh, was was very inactive after getting married and having the first kid. Then around 2018 into 19, I uh, joined a club here in the Kansas City area that I'm still a part of as a Cherokee and a Cessna 150. And those airplanes, are they're very good airplanes, very well equipped airplanes. Uh, but I, uh, out of this grass strip a mile from my house, I am, uh, could not resist the urge to being able to go fly and, you know, just on any given evening when the weather, when the weather finally calms down rather than driving 45 minutes to the, to the airport where the club airplanes are based. I owned a Cessna 175 briefly in 2017 into 2018 when we were still in South Carolina. And you know, that was a great airplane as well. But I think this is the most fun airplane I've flown. Uh, you don't really go anywhere very fast in it. You know, we're sitting here at 2,100 RPM at about 80 miles an hour. Uh, but it's just fun. Uh, it's not the same kind of fun, it's not the same kind of view. Nice down low and slow that you get when you're flying a Cessna or a, you know, Piper Cherokee type airplane. Not that there's anything wrong with those airplanes. Uh, this style of flying is just for me. And a couple times a year we take one of the club airplanes if we want to go somewhere. Uh, that's more of a vehicle than a fun aviation experience at that point. At least for me, now that I've now that I've experienced uh, this kind of flying, and it's it's affordable flying. You know, my Cessna 175 it burned between 10 and 11 gallons an hour. So you're looking at you know 
50 to 60 dollars an hour just in fuel before any of your other expenses are considered. And that can kind of take the fun out of it, whereas this airplane burns four to four and a half gallons of, of automotive gasoline per hour. And I can really fly on less than $20 an hour. Now certainly there's other fixed expenses and you know, maybe I can get into that in another video if folks are interested in what it costs to own an antique tail dragger. You know, the answer is more than you want it to be, but less than less than you think it might be, I think, so really not too bad. No worse than any of the number of motorcycles I've owned in my life, really, for the most part. There's some maintenance costs that certainly more than other vehicles. It's a quiet night, nice night to fly, there's not too many bumps, but it is a... Uh, the wind's a little bit squirrely near the surface, and it's definitely windy up here. But that's alright, we're still having a good time. I think there's a little fishing reservoir up here, we can go see if anybody's having any luck down there, and uh, probably head back to the airport. I've only got about 30 minutes or so before sunset, so don't want to push this too far. Because of those those hours I did, those years that I was mostly inactive, I'm still a relatively low time pilot. Around uh, I haven't tallied up my hours for a little while, but somewhere between 160 and 175 hours, I think, and about 40 or 45 of those is in this airplane already. I bought this airplane in uh, September of last year. I've had it most eight or nine months now, I guess. Getting some bumps now. Quite a few people down fishing. Give them a little wave.
Alright, that windsock looks like it's basically directly over the runway. I mean, across the runway. Means we can have our pick of runways, which normally means landing runway 35. Just because you don't have quite the number of obstacles that you do landing 17. We'll go ahead and dial in the nearest AWOS as well and see what that's all about. Celsius. Altimeter 2, Niner, Niner, 5. Remarks. Density altitude 2,100. Lawrence Municipal Airport, Lawrence, Kansas. Automated weather observation 0122 Zulu. Wind 300 at 08. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Alright, so there's airport. With AWOS is calling uh, 300, which would favor runway 35 anyway. So given that the sock is kind of limp directly across the runway, and the nearest airport with AWOS is calling, favoring the north, that's what we'll do. set in for a nice long final. So you'll see you landing 3-5. It's quite a bit uphill. So we normally aim kind of for the crest of the hill. I might drop it in a little bit because that's going to make that wind die down anyway into the goalie. All right, we're going to go under 2,000 RPM, so we'll pull car Pete. And we'll go ahead and start slowing it up to about 60. We're gusting winds a little bit, so we'll... We'll go ahead and start putting that flip in. To adjust for that west wind. Still a little bit fast, pull out the power. Runway's main. Bumpy down here. This one could be sporty. Like I said, 45 hours in tailwheel so far, so that uh, oleo landing gear that Aronka gave me came in handy. <laughs> 